last two. How you guys doing? It is Lori here, also known as Sharky Stitcher on this channel and on Instagram. Both are dedicated to the craft of cross-stitching with a few dabblings of some other little crafties, usually textile related, thrown in there. We're harmless. Don't be afraid. Come on in. It's a good time. Anyways, today um, it's a typical floss tube video. Um, I've got a fair bit of stuff to talk about, so this might be a long one. You guys already know how long it is, but um, I might get a little rambly today. I uh, got a few things to go over, um, life update stuff. I kind of alluded to updating you guys about something in this video, which I will do. And then um, got some haul to show you guys. Uh, I'm gonna go over kind of what I bought at the Chatelaine European Cross Stitch, the kit for the Chatelaine kits uh, sale. Some more sales coming up that you guys should look out for if you do like Chatelaine. And some other things I'm kidding up, I've got something new on the frame over here because we also have a happy dance. So yeah, that's exciting. And I'm just kind of going to go over the upcoming videos that you're going to be seeing, um, plans for the year. And I'm also going to kind of transgress into where I missed out on things last year because I kind of am approaching kind of the whip parade for 2021. Um, and looking at that, I realized all the stuff that I kind of neglected <laughs> over the past year. It's been a year though. Let's just say that. So first let me get into the life update. I'll try to keep this fairly brief. If you're like, eh, I don't want to hear that stuff. I want it. I'm interested in the stitching, but I feel it's kind of pertinent because it kept me from stitching and it kept me from doing a lot of things. And that's because I had another cancer scare and this one was a little more significant. Calm down. We're all good. We're all good, no cancer in the house here, but this scare was a little more significant than the last one. Um, basically, long story short, um, when I filmed my last video, it was October, it was Halloween. October 28th, I basically had a surgery, surgical procedure. <laughs> um, it, I had a sur cervical leap procedure done. Basically, I flunked my pap and then I had a biopsy and I flunked that, so I had to get a bigger biopsy and if they had found cancer in that, I was going to have to have a hysterectomy. So with that on the line, that kind of put a lot of things in my life on hold-ish, um, just because recovery time from a hysterectomy, yeah, it's kind of long, you know? Um, you know, but, and I'm a self-employed massage therapist. I was worried about scheduling my clients. I'm going to Costa Rica in January for a cuffing course. I already got my plane ticket spot and everything. So I was like, that's on the line. I can't be going to another country if I'm having major surgery or anything like that. So a lot of stuff was just in the air. It was kind of stressful, obviously. So I don't know. I just felt very stagnant when I was going through all that. So, but I had the procedure done, got the results back. They got all of the precancerous cells. It was pretty significant. I was stage three precancerous, which is about as bad as it gets. So, but they got them all. We got clear margins in the house. So that's what we want to hear. And now I'm just on the hook for doing pap smears every six months for a while. So yay. But hey, it's better than having cancer. So I will accept that. So yeah, that was kind of the update I was alluding to in the last video. Um, I just didn't want to say the C word when I didn't know what was on the other, other side of the equal sign, you know, because I, I don't like people fretting about me. I'm not really good at being fussed over. And, you know, I just didn't want to, I don't know, put it out there without knowing what the end of the story was. So, but I will say it did comfort me a lot while I was going through this, seeing stories of other people that had had it. So that's another reason I kind of wanted to put it out there. If you're going through anything like this or it comes up, even if this video is like three years old or whatever, Feel free to shoot me a message, you know, if you want all the gory details. I am 0% squeamish. I will tell you all the dirty grossness of everything. I'm trying to spare y'all, you know, because this isn't an anatomy channel. <laughs> but uh, if, if you're going through something like that and you need a sounding board, feel free to message me. You can message me on Instagram or on YouTube. I'm kind of, if it takes a few days, it's probably because my notifications are off. So give me some time, but I will happily discuss things with you if you need a sounding board and you know it is comforting when you're going through things because you feel like oh my god I'm the only person this ever happened to and just knowing that you're not helps so there's that um further life update um mentioned the Costa Rica thing I'm going to Costa Rica in July or in, in January <laughs> July um so that was one happy dance I had when I got the um 
all clear for the cancer thing was, yay, I can go to Costa Rica. So um, I'm going there for a CEU workshop on cupping. I'm a massage therapist and cupping's a massage practice that we can do. And so I've been looking for a class and one just happened to pop up in Costa Rica. I have been to Costa Rica before, so I'm excited to go back. I'll be there for pretty much the 8th to the 18th or so. And then I've got like some layover stuff too. So I'll be gone longer than that. But so that's exciting. Um, we'll have to see if I can take some stitching. I'm not sure yet I, because I ran into the issue when me and the kid went to Florida where I realized I couldn't take my straightening iron and I need my straightening iron. I'm very spoiled with it now and I don't like stitching without it. So don't know if any stitching is going with me, but we'll see when that time comes. Another little life update. This was another thing that got put on hold because of the whole cancer thing, but now, you know, all clear. I'm going to be getting braces. I'm not getting them until February, I think. Um, at least that's when I'm scheduled right now. I had thrown out to her, um, cause she had said something about, Oh, the next point we have available is December, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I'm leaving for Costa Rica a few weeks after that. I don't know if I want to have braces put on and then a few weeks later go to a foreign country you know like how about we just wait till after <laughs> you know so we're looking at february for putting all the hardware on and all that fun stuff i'm not looking forward to that but i am looking forward to straight teeth so yeah that's a thing um but yeah now on to the stitchy stuff tried to keep the life update brief hope that was brief enough for you guys um so with the whole, yay, I don't have cancer thing, what is the thing that you wanna do? Freaking retail therapy and perfect timing for me because it was the European Cross Stitch Shadling Kit Sale, which everything was 10% off for the November 1st to the 15th. And I had myself a little listy list and I mentioned in the last video that I thought I had ordered mushroom and fern but I couldn't find it anywhere. Well, I solved the mystery. I did order mushroom and fern, but with the last, when I got Hawaiian garden, I had ordered at the same time as Hawaiian garden. I forgot. <laughs> and there's been such a delay with like the Gloriana's and stuff. And I know they've been backlogged with um, orders from back in April because of that. And I know Cindy hates that. So she sent me the Hawaiian garden but I'm still waiting on the mushroom and fern. And I just, when I got the Hawaiian garden, I was like, oh, here it is. And I remembered Hawaiian garden was kind of a pricey one. So I was like, did I just order that one? Probably. So it just didn't even occur to me that, oh, hey, mushroom and fern should be in this too. You know, so I've ordered it. It's just not here yet. So that's something I can look forward to once the Gloriana's come in. But man, that's a delay on the Gloriana's, you know, cause I ordered, ordered it like around tax day or something like that. So, yeah, that's a delay for Gloriana's because it's, you know, November now. So mid, oh, past mid-November. It's November 17th today. So yeah, that's quite a delay. So if you're ordering, if, if you did order, plan on waiting a while if you got the Gloriana's uh, silk because they're delayed because of all the shipping delays. So I happily was able to cross that off the, oh, I need to add this to my list, you know, because uh, mushroom and fern, it's one. Of, it's a pricey one. It's not as pricey as Hawaiian Garden, but you know, it's it's a pricey one. So um, let me see here. I had to make myself a list since I tend to forget it all the time what I ordered and stuff. So I've been trying to get better at making myself lists. This is what you ordered. Don't forget it. These are the metallics you ordered for this design. So when it comes, don't be like, "What did I get this for?" Because I do that all the time. <laughs> so my order with European cross stitch. Now I should say. I made two orders. <laughs> I made this first initial big kit order when I got my cancer all clear. And I was planning on doing this anyway, so it's not like, you know, something spontaneous or anything. But man, did it feel good clicking that submit button. <laughs> so the first order I made, I got, and I had spoken about this last time, I ordered everything for Polar Beauty. That's the um, Arctic animals, and it's got lots of turquoises and purples, you know, like all my favorite colors in it. So I ordered the thread pack, including Gloriana's, and the bead pack. It didn't seem like it had a separate NPI pack, so, because I didn't write that on here, so it must not have one. 
Um, I ordered the NPI pack for Caribbean Mandala. I already have Caribbean Mandala, but when I ordered it, I ordered it with no NPI because I was like, oh, there's just eight of them, you know, like I'll save a couple bucks and, you know, just sub them for DMC. Well, now I'm a spoiled brat and I want the silks. <laughs> so I decided I was going to order those. And so I did. Um, I also ordered, I talked about Rainforest Quilt. That's a big one. That one I think has like 58 NPIs and you can order the thread pack, which includes all the silks except for NPI. So like all the multicolored silks and stuff, uh, the metallics, silk lame, like any of the weird threads. Um, and not, they never include DMC. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but they never include the DMC just because those are easy enough to pick up at the craft store. So I ordered the thread pack and I ordered the bead pack and next sale I will be ordering the NPI pack. I'm thinking the thread pack was like two, hang on. I have a listy list here. I'll tell you exactly what it cost. Do, 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 do. I'm old school. I write stuff down still. <laughs> okay. So the thread pack costs not $246 and 45 cents. The bead pack was $49.25. For some reason, I get really excited when the bead packs hit around like $50 because I'm like, ooh, that means there's a lot of them because <laughs> I'm a bead fiend. The NPI pack, which I think there's 58, 50 something. I'm not sure of that number exactly, but the cost for that pack is $275.50. So the NPI silks for Rainforest Quilt are the most expensive part of the kit. Could I stitch it with DMC? Yeah, but I don't wanna. <laughs> so I'm treating myself to the silks, but I'm saving the MPI for later just to kind of spread the cost out a little bit. Could I have omitted a couple kits from that and just ordered everything? Yeah, but psh, where's the fun in that? So then I made that order, I think November 2nd. Sale was from the 1st to the 15th. Invariably, what always happens is when the 15th comes around, someone makes a post last day to order, blah, 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 and then I start getting a little twitchy. <laughs> so, um, what did I add? I added, I know I said I was being all good and writing things down. Here we go. All right. So, what I ended up ordering... Actually, I don't even think this was it. I think this was my scratch pad. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'll try to see if I can remember. But basically, oh, it's on here. So basically what I did was I ordered a couple bead packs because I started thinking like some of these designs that I want, but I'm not planning on buying them for a little while. Some of them, and this, this is my logic. This is my anxious brain. I'm not trying to make you guys anxious. I don't want to make my issues your issues, but this is what kind of spurred me to do this. But some of these kits have some kind of special crystal that goes in the center. I can't buy my Swarovski crystals anymore from Fire Mountain Gems. So I thought, you know, I'm just going to buy some of these bead packs. That way I don't have to worry about it because it is getting harder to find them, you know, like I thought, which is why I hoard them. So the second order I made, I got the bead pack for Egypt Garden, which is a $72 bead pack. And that makes my toes wiggle because I'm like, huh, there's so many. Now, the funny thing is, is I've had that kit before. Um, I bought it back in the day and I actually started a little bit of it. And then I, I think it was right around the time when I had my hiatus from stitching and I was like, oh, I'm probably never stitching again. So I sold a bunch of stuff. I sold that kit. So I've seen the bead pack before and I know it's got like a lot of the bicones and it's got a lot of bugle beads and stuff like that in there. But man, I just love it when it's such a bead. I love when I pick up the package like from the mail and it sounds like a freaking baby rattle. Like that just mm, makes my toes wiggle. Then I ordered the beads for spring, not garden. I went through a weird thing with some of the designs to wear like I just finished autumn dusk you guys will see that in a minute I already posted a video um, of a drool with me to where you could see it up close and everything 
but people were asking me like, okay, are you going to stitch the other seasons? And I'm like, I don't want to fall in that rabbit hole. There are a few of the other ones that I do like, but I feel like if I'm going to stitch two or three of them, I may as well stitch all of them. So kind of what I went to was I'll stitch autumn, dusk, banner, spring, not garden. Like I'll pick a season from several different things. And so that's kind of what I'm going with now. And I really love spring, not garden. It's kind of girly and light and airy and whimsical which is funny because sometimes I don't like that but I really like that one it's just so pretty you know so I ordered the beads for that and that was a cheap one um, I ordered the beads for Moroccan town I already have that chart and it's high up there for kits that I'm probably going to buy next sale oh I almost forgot there's another kit that I bought that I didn't tell you guys about Halloween kitty. It's like a Halloween mandala. It's so cute. You don't see a whole bunch of people stitching it, but I was like, I'm getting that one. So that was in the, the first order with Polar Beauty. And then I got the beads for Tahiti mandala. The mandalas I tend to favor are the tropical ones. If there's palm trees, fish, and tropical birds, I'm all in. And I also like the Eastern exotic, like Moroccan, Egypt, um, Taj Mahal. Um, I'm not so into the European designs. I like them, but it's kind of one of the things where these kits are expensive. They take a long time to do. I have to kind of draw a line in the sand because you can't stitch all of them, you know? So I'm going to stick with the ones that are like tropical, that have an ocean theme, that have countries that I've been to, like I've been to Egypt before, so I really feel like I should stitch that one. And you know, I do really love the center with the fish. Oh, so cute. Um, so I'm trying to like hold off on some of them. I'm like, ooh, that's pretty. But I'm like, no, 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 you, you got plenty. I'm already far enough in this rabbit hole. You know, I'm trying not to just completely let go of the walls and fall all the way <laughs> which I did just tell you how much stuff that I bought so you're all like girl quit lying to yourself I know <laughs> so um that's basically what I ordered for the Chatelaine sale I made two separate orders um I also the second order I was tempted to buy a few other like straight kits you know and I've got like a list of different ones that I was wanting but then I was like, ah, oh, man, if I order this bead pack, this bead pack, this bead pack, and then I order a kit and there's one or two Gloriana's in it, I'm not going to see that for a while. And it's going to drive Cindy crazy too, because she's like, dang it, you know, why didn't you just order that separate? So I thought I'll just order the beads and then maybe I can get that one fairly quickly, you know? So since there's no silks to wait on, I think the the beads and the crystals. I don't think there's a wait for them. That and I thought, let me treat Cindy so that she can get an order that's like, oh my gosh, something that I don't have to put on hold for Gloriana's because anything I order now, I'm sure it's in line behind other stuff that's still waiting for threads. So yeah, that's one reason why I did the second order and I did it exclusively for beads. I don't really like buying pieces like that. I prefer to buy like everything, but I made an exception just be, you know, especially with the whole Swarovski thing. Like I want to make sure I've got the stuff that I need and I don't want to have to get substitutions down the line. So I ordered the ones that I was like, Ooh, I'm going to be sad if you know, this crystal's missing or whatever. So, okay. Um, kind of veining off of that, there is a Chatelaine chart sale from, um, Oh gosh names names are so bad for me like I'm so jealous of everybody that is so good with names like because I'm bad at it especially when I've got a camera aiming at me you know that just makes me like oh all the names just fly out of my head um Ella I think um she's the one that is handling things and she posted that they're having the chart sale it's going to be 20 percent off um for two days and I think it's around Black Friday I don't know what the specific dates are. If I think if I find them, I'll put them in the comments down below. But if you follow the Chatelaine Facebook page, or even if you go to the website, I think it should be on there. So I'm making myself a little shopping list for there. And oh my gosh, guys, I just mm. 
So anything, I've decided anything that I've ordered a kit for that I don't have the chart, I'm getting that chart. Um, I'm looking at, I gotta get the Halloween kitty mandala design because I want that one. I'm looking at maybe Tahiti, maybe Spring Knot Garden, um, maybe the small Hammam Oasis, just because that's like, it's not a mandala, it's just like a small like little scene, but it's, it's really pretty. <laughs> um, I, I kind of am at a point where I'm like, gosh, I should be running out of charts that I want to get, but once you know when there's a sale going on, you can usually find something that you like that you don't have, so <laughs> that's kind of what's going on there. But yeah, I am kind of getting to a point where I don't really need much. You know, it's more like, oh, there's a sale. Let's let's get stuff. Okay, so also, I was still in retail therapy mode. And I got some haul from 123 Stitch and from a few other things. I'll show you some of the smaller hauls. Um, there's this PDF design that I've been looking at for a while. And I was hesitating. Let me just show it to you. It's a little pug, which is what I have, my puppy dog. The reason I was hesitating is because my pug is black. And I kept kind of staring at this like, is there a way I could convert that to black? Probably, but then you don't get all the color changes. And most people like, because she's all black, I'll be walking her and they'll be like, what kind of dog is she? And I'm like, she's a pug. And they're like, oh, I didn't know they came in black, which always makes me laugh a little bit. I mean, I feel like they're not as distinct though without the um the fawn coloring and the black mat black mask and the black ears like that's kind of a trademark pug you know type stuff so I don't know if if I make it all kind of same t color I think it's going to be kind of tonal so I kind of decided just stitch it like this it's a pug you have a pug yeah it's not supposed to be your pug but whatever I do like the color changes though I think they're really cool looking so that was something I'd been eyeing for a while and I decided just get it while you have a functioning printer, you know, because that's always, always a fun thing with me. Um, I had a little splurge with one of my favorite fabric people because she had posted a bunch of stuff and I was like, ooh, gimme. I think I showed you some from her last time. This is from Oksana Lopatina. She sells stuff on eBay, also known as Crazy Hamster. But yes, I, she had some opalescence up, so I just could not resist. So this one's pretty, lots of greens, little, little bitty hints of like some yellows here and there. So it's just very earthy and it's opalescent. So I got that. And then this one, I'm like, Ooh, I haven't seen you do like colors like this before. This is a 36 count, but she does a lot of opalescent 36 count, which I'm kind of playing with a little bit, like, because I had steered away from it because I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, beads will never fit on that because, you know, I'm a big bead whore. So, like, if it's too small, beads don't fit on it. But I, I have a fair few designs that don't have beads on it, so I thought that'd be cool. This one's similar to one that I already have, but I like it so much that I was like, I don't care that it looks kind of the same. It's a 36 count as well. So yeah, there's that. Looks kind of like the fabric that I'm using for um, Temptress of the Cursed Sea, which I'm really excited to get her started. Haven't done it yet, but she's very high on the list. This is the only non-opalescent. It's also a 36 count, but I just thought it was real pretty. This kind of reminds me of fabrics by Stephanie. I um, can't remember what the color name is. Yeah, I'm not going to remember. I'm, I'm stitching um, Teresa Wensler's Wisdom Dragon on it, which is overdue for some stitchy time. But isn't that pretty? I just really like it. And uh, I know this is stupid, but I, th I think it's cool that it's surged in purple. <laughs> okay, another thing I got. I got this. I think I had this when I filmed the last video. I just forgot about it. Um, I had been looking for like a... Um, little project bag for when I was going to Florida. Wasn't finding anything I liked, but I liked this design and I just kept staring at it. And then, you know, some days it pops up on your feed and you're like, you know what? Today's the day you're mine. I just love like the cemetery and the spookiness of it. And I think I'm going to put Halloween fairy in here. I'm going to start her pretty soon here too. So 
yeah, excited about that. My first project bag. I did um, buy a bunch of, oh, let me pull one over here, a bunch of these thingies too, just because they're quick and dirty and they're cheap. Okay, so now we're on to the one, two, three stitch order. So one funny thing about this order is I did get, um, I ordered two charts and they sent me the wrong ones. And I had ordered some of the Letter Mermaids by Nora Corbet. And they sent me the fairies instead. So I'll be probably sending them back and then getting the mermaids. So it's funny they sent me the right letter. It was just a fairy instead of a mermaid. So it's funny how that happened. But so those are going to be sent back. I'm trying to think. Okay. These is one of the things where it's like, I put these in my cart for a design and now I can't remember which design it is, but I have them for when I'm ready. I have been wanting to get some more of these just kind of, um, different kinds of cotton flosses too, just to play with a little bit. So, but these are classic color works and simply shaker sampler threads, gentle art. So I just thought that was kind of fun. Here's a fun little design. Just hallowed ground little this reminds me of um you know the old school cartoon is it disney i can't remember where the skeletons are like you know they come out of the ground and it's like dunk, dunk 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 you know do you guys remember what i'm talking about where they get out and they start dancing you know like it kind of reminded me of that that was cute here's a new mirabila the three mermaids i really liked them this kind of reminds me of Hecate, um, the Greek goddess of witchcraft, just because she's usually in triple goddess form to where it looks like she has like three faces and kind of almost the Kali type Hindu arms. So the, these mermaids reminded me of that, but it also reminded me of the Three of Cups by Stephanie Law, her tarot deck. She's got these three mermaids with cups. So I'm thinking of adding cups, them like holding like cups or something. To make it kind of tarot-y, you know? Because I, I don't know. I just think that'd be cool. I typically am not a fan of her excessive use of chartreuse green, but I kind of like it for this one because she put a lot of, like, that light sea foam in with it. So that and it's cool. Like, their tails are all beaded and the beads are all different colors. So I kind of, I'm kind of intrigued to see what that looks like. I think it's going to be kind of a cool texture. Oh, here's a button that goes with, where is it? this design. I just thought that's super cute. Someone posted something on Instagram and I was like, I need to look that up. So I looked this up and here we go. This button goes with it. I think that was the only button they had in stock. There's like two or three more that I need. This one, I've had this in my cart so many times and then when I go to buy it, it's sold out. So finally they had it and I'm like, I'm buying it. <laughs> so these are the Mill Hill, um, it's an autumn series and I fancy, I have one of these. I think it's the library or something like a spooky library or something. And I fancy just buying a bunch of these houses and stitching them all together, you know, like a road or something. I just think that'd be kind of cute. And this is one I definitely wanted just cause I love the colors in it. So, and it comes with this kind of perforated paper, which is funny. It always seems more like rubber than paper to me. But, and I'm, I'm not too keen on stitching on that. So, which also, it's like, how do you even put this, like, in a frame or a hoop? Do you, I don't know. Like, how do you even do it? It's so little. Like, I, ha I really hate stitching with hoops nowadays, too. Like, I'm so spoiled with my stand and my, you know, my flat iron and all that fun stuff. I'm such a spoiled stitcher. But, yeah, I just, I really like that. And it was always sold out. So, finally, I got it. I like the... Uh, is it Wanda, the witch? She's like a, just a witch lady. That one sold out a lot too. I think I just thought, I think I had both in my cart and I decided I just wanted to get one. So I decided to get this one. And I'm buying these a couple at a time. And then when I have all the ones that I want to make like my little spooky street, then I'm going to decide what color fabric. I might just do like a black opalescent, but it depends, you know, on which ones I end up picking. Here's two designs because they had um, two words in front of them that almost always, if I like it, make me buy it. And that is limited edition. So 
Stitchy Witchy Mouses by Just Nan. Look how cute those are. It's riding a little broomstick and it's got a little hat. Like, that's super cute. Do I like mice? Not really. But if it's a witch, you know, you talked me into it. Especially when it's got that little broom. And this comes with, you know, the little hat and the little tail and some of the beads. And then this is the Stitchy Witchy Mouse. She doesn't have a broom, but she still has the hat. And the hat's a different color. And I like the cat. <laughs> that there's a cat on a mouse. I found that ironic. So I'm trying to get more into like things that are finished not in a frame, you know? Because it's like I've got a boss ass sewing machine that I'm terrified of because it's so nice. I need to start getting over my fear and get to know it and get to doing some cool stuff with it. So yeah, it's part of why I got that. Also, the little broomstick just sold me and limited edition made me pull the trigger quicker. Here's a design I've been wanting for a little little while, and when it was in stock, I was like, well, let me grab it. This is a Victoria Stampler design, Mermaid Song, and again, lots of fun little stitchy things that I can do with that, but I really love the colors in it. Now, I learned something a little concerning, at least concerning to me, because um, I'm looking at this, and there's some silk ribbon. Silk ribbon, I have a real hard time finding for, like, silk ribbon work. Um, it's just kind of hard to find, and when you shop for it online, it's rarely ever the color that you want exactly. So, when I saw all this kind of silk ribbon seaweed in here, I thought, oh, well, I need to get me the accessory pack. Because typically, there's an accessory pack that's made um, to where you buy it, and it's got all the supplies, and that way you don't have to buy a full skein of all these different kinds of silks when you don't really even need that much silk. So it's nice. They're usually a little pricey, but you know, it's still cheaper than if you were to buy full skeins of everything. Apparently, they're all discontinued at this point. So I'm like, shit. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to start going and looking for everything. So not looking forward to that, but I really wanted this design. So, and I like the little killer whale on it too. I think it's cute. So then, I was on a little bit of a Victoria Sampler kick because I was going through my Victoria Sampler collection the other day and there's designs that I want that I realized I don't have. So I'm like, well, crap, like I've got to get those. And this one, I've told you guys a few videos ago, I'm in the mood to do a Biz Cornu. And I really like this one because it's got Bargello in it. And I could switch the colors to where it's not Christmas because I think that's probably what I'll do. Um... I kind of like the Christmas one, but it's, it's it's probably just because it's that time of year right now. Once we get past December, I guarantee you I'm not going to be wanting to stitch Christmas colors. I also really like the, um, the scissor fob, and they have an alternate colorway and design there. So I think that's cool. But yeah, I'm looking at this Biz Cornu, and it's a little different from the parrot one that I bought. This one looks a little more complicated, but I think that's good. It's good practice. I can learn how to do something again. And I got this design. Couldn't decide if I liked October or autumn. So I'm like, ah, well, I'll just get both of them. <laughs> so yeah, I was still on my little Halloween kick. Didn't have it out of my system yet. Um, few other things that I kind of got, I guess you'd say. Um, let me get these out of the way first. So I got, okay, so this I saw on Instagram. It's a freebie. And I don't know what possessed me. It's not something I typically would do. But it's super cute. These little gingerbread dudes. And this is from Punani Punani. Puntini Puntini, my bad. P-U-N-T-I-N-I, P-U-N-T-I-N-I. And if you search that on Instagram, you should find her page. She has an Etsy shop where she sells a lot of cute counting pins. I actually, after printing this design, because it's, it's so cute. You know, and it's just simple. It'll stitch up real quick. Um, so once I printed this, and I was looking at like her shop. I ended up ordering a couple of her counting pins. I got some little fruit slices that she had that I thought were super cute. Just because it's like, if you're gonna be nice and throw me a free design, I wanna throw you some support, you know? So, cause that's super nice of you. So today I picked up some threads for it. Um, I was looking for a, one of these DMC V-graded threads um, in browns, but I couldn't find a brown that I liked. It was either like, 
browns to grays and who wants cookies that have gray spots on them not me they were also too light like it was like a tan color so i decided i'm gonna pull a teresa wensler and i'm just gonna blend two threads to get kind of the not one color effect i haven't decided which color it's gonna be yet but i also haven't picked my fabric yet so that'll determine that but i got these reds for the little flower thingies the green for the grass around the flowers and then these for the gingerbread and then i just need white to stitch the little zigzaggy things on the gingerbread the gingerbread men also have some red like buttons on them you know what i'm gonna do those are gonna be beads <laughs> so i'm just gonna put a bead for that and then yeah i'll probably stitch that up just because i told you guys i've been on small kicks just because they're giving me little micro happy dances and i'm kind of liking it because i'm used to stitching big stuff that takes years to finish so it's kind of nice getting little happy dances here and there um before we get to happy dances one more thing i wanted to show you guys i'm really excited about this i spoke about this the last video i had this is um, the design by Julie from Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. She put out this design called Luna, which is a little skeleton hand with a Luna moth on the fingertip. I can't show you a picture just because the only picture I have is the chart, so I'm not showing you guys that. But I went digging through my beads and my threads and stuff, and I think I have made some decisions, and I'm super excited about them. So one thing I was considering for fabric was black, you know. Well, I went through my black and I just, I wasn't feeling it. That and the one piece I have of Echo that's kind of um, practically black, it just wasn't big enough. Like I'd have had, I'd have had enough, but I wanted extra margins. So when I picked this color, my first thought was it's kind of Lisa Frankie, you know, like I was kind of going for gothic, dark, skeleton hand, you know. But then when I saw this fabric and I had my beads picked out, I was kind of like, I just like it too much. So you might be like, oh, wow, that's going to be, you know, kind of a thing. But I'm with it, so I'm going for it. So, whoops, probably dropping everything on the floor here. I have this piece of crystal opalescent da Vinci. And let me just show you the beads I picked out. The beads were pretty easy. I just needed a light green, a slightly darker green, and then like a purple. So here's, crap, one of my tubes is smaller. It's gonna be hard to show you. Let me roll it so you can at least see the purple. Oh my God, it's all falling apart. Let me pick that up. Oh my God, it's got my bead maracas falling all over the place. Okay. All right, now I think I have my shit together. <laughs> but look at those colors. Oh, I love it. I think it's going to look so cool. Now, the only problem is this is a, is it a 32 count. Yeah, it's 32 count. That's going to be tight. But because of the design, the moth is kind of at the top. So if I need to overlap beads because it's, I might be a little crazy for trying this, but I don't give a fuck. I'm doing it anyways. <laughs> um, it might be kind of tight, but because the moth is like at the top, I can overlap if I need to because there's no other stitching around it. So that's basically what I'm planning. Now for the skeleton, I was going back and forth with, do I want to just use a sparkly opalescent thread? And I was like, really, are you going to do that? You're going to go full on sparkly like freaking twilight vampire on this skeleton hand or glow in the dark well when i was shopping on one two three stitch i found the perfect thread and i was like mm, there is a silk lame sparkly glow in the dark treasure braid isn't that amazing oh i was just like yes rainbow gallery yes so i bought two cards of it just to make sure i have enough because i did have this uh one white opalescent thread i don't know if this is glow in the dark i haven't checked it yet but the problem is with lots of krennic metallics is the sticker has fallen off so i have no idea what this color is and i didn't know if this one spool was enough so i was like two cards of this please so just to give you guys a little preview and I will throw this in because I also need a yellow thread to backstitch, but I think I'm going to use this gold just because I think it'll show up better. So here is the preview. Ah, 
I think that's gonna look cool. Now my plan is, I wanna get a few stitches thrown in this fairly soon because my plan is when I go over to mom's house to start cooking Thanksgiving, I have all damn day there. We watch the dog show. Um, we don't have a huge family, so we like start early, get everything cooking, and then we sit for several hours. So I'm planning on bringing the stitching then, so that's, I'll probably try and get the skeleton hand stitched then. I might bring the beads too, just because, I don't know, beads are, beads motivate me. They're like a carrot, you know, on the end of a stick for me. They really get me going. Oh, and one other thing, there's a few spots on the butterfly where there's some beads in the wing that are purple, and there's two by two, four of them. What fits perfectly in that? A treasure bicone. So I might be bedazzling this thing, which I'm all for. I think it's gonna be fun. Is it gonna be a little girly, cutesy, unicorny when I was kind of thinking gothic? Yes, but that's okay. It's funny. I kind of have a foot in both those worlds. Like, I love fairies. I love mermaids. I love labyrinth. I love, like, that whimsy. But then I also like freaking metal, goth. Like, I like it both. So, I can go both ways there. <laughs> so, but let's get this put away. And then I think the next thing I will show you guys is my happy tip. Now, you guys may have already seen this on my uh, Drool With Me video where I took some close-ups, which the close-ups still didn't even really do it justice, but one thing that wasn't done justice in that video was the size because it's so long and skinny. Like, I'd have to stand back so far for you guys to see it, and then you wouldn't see any details. So I thought, I'll just do that in this video. So here is my finished Autumn Dusk banner. So let me scooch back. So you can see it yeah and here's all the extra that i have i probably could have started it up higher and then sawed some off on the bottom and had extra to play with but oh well this fabric don't ask me what it is it's i got it from europe for the most part because i think it's the called for fabric but it's been discontinued or something i just really wanted the green i hope that this is coming across green i guess if i hold it in front of this door here you can see that it's green but yeah it's pretty tall um, but just to maybe give you guys some close-ups here in case you haven't watched the other video or you don't want to watch the other video. So here's the top. I changed some of the crystals. I added this um, this leaf here. There, This was, nothing was even called for in the um, chart. And I looked at some older pictures and there was like this grape charm put in there. But that didn't make a lot of sense to me just because there's no other grapes on this project. So why would one random cluster of grapes be there? So I opted to get this leaf charm and I, I think it goes well with the mushrooms. I changed the colors of these crystals. Those are Aronite AB times two instead of aquamarine. Isn't it sparkly? I love the little mushrooms. I think they're cute. And then this hedgehog was supposed to be right here, but right here were two asshole squirrels. And I said, no, <laughs> you're not going on here. I'm not stitching you. So I moved the hedgehog up and then I have this cute little charm here with a little sleepy fox and I thought that was perfect for fall and I think it goes really well with the colors and yes I could have put the fox here and left the hedgehog alone but I just I don't know I just think he looks so cute you know just sleeping in the flowers that and I like the idea better of the mushrooms with the hedgehog because it looked more scale appropriate and then here's my favorite part the middle now this design I think is really good for like if you're brand new to shad lanes and you want to try your hand at stitching them, but you're kind of intimidated by the huge mandalas. I think a design like this is good because this is kind of like the center of a mandala, but then you have these smaller motifs that you only have to stitch once. You know, if you're doing a mandala, pretty much you'd be stitching the same thing four times, you know, around it. And that can get a little bit tedious. So if you're not into that, or if you just want to try it out, these banners are good. They also have mini mandalas that are about this size. If you wanted to just do like a mandala you know so but oh, I love how sparkly it is this is a new addition to me uh it was supposed to just be beads but I had this little flower crystal and I just thought it looked looked like it should go on there so I put it there I changed the colors here those were um light topaz which is kind of a brownie color and I thought eh, I want more color so I added the fire opal ab and I added the aronite crystals here just because I thought they looked really good with the blue green and I think these are 
think that's zircon blue zircon so yeah very happy with it and i'm gonna stick with the tradition that i have borrowed from kyle reckemeyer from stitching and sound he's got a really cool channel i'm so glad he's posting stuff again i love his sense of humor he's so dry i love it so but i'm gonna borrow his tradition of doing a shop for a finish and I actually remembered my alcohol today. So um, it's kind of late and I've got to work tomorrow. I've got a long day at work tomorrow, which is which is good. It's, when you're self-employed, you like being busy. But I pulled out my American honey just because this stuff's practically like cough syrup. So why not have some cough syrup and then go to bed? I also really like the flavor of this. Now I couldn't find my beloved shot glass because I'm redoing my floors and the floor, the room that's in disarray right now is the dining room. And that was where all of my liquor lived, which I don't have a lot and I can't find my shot glass. But what I could find was my souvenir teacup from Savannah, Georgia. So that will do for my shot glass. So, ugh, gosh, I haven't drank this in so long. It's kind of stuck shut, but I got it. Okay. This stuff is actually really good. If you want something that warms you up and you know you just want like a little something like this, this stuff is pretty good. I think that's probably enough for tonight. I'm not a big drinker, like I said, but hey, happy dance. So, Slangeva. Ah, uh, yes, cough syrup. So yeah. This stuff's good. I like it. American Honey. It's uh, by Wild Turkey, I guess. Twill do. I think I've had this bottle for like, gosh, probably five, six years or something. Look how much I've, you know, I don't drink much. I like this stuff. It's good. Don't think like because I have this much left after that long that it's not good. It is good. I just don't drink much. So, I guess if I finished more stuff, that would get me drinking more. But hey, let's leave that alone. <laughs> I stitch big stuff. It takes a while to finish. Yeah, though I will say, like, I started this in fall, and I finished it in fall, so I, I'm pretty proud of myself. Usually when I, and I wouldn't let myself put this down, like, I kind of really wanted to move on and do other things. I wasn't hating working on this, but I was really feeling the call of the sea, <laughs> so I, um, I knew, though, if I put this down, it was going to stay put down until next year, so I just trucked it out and yay, got a happy dance out of it. I am going to finish this as a bell pull and I'm thinking I'll probably maybe hang it seasonally, something like that. So yeah, there's that. One other thing, slightly hollish and maybe slightly off topic, but I was like, I'm still super excited about it. So I had a kind of a silly purchase. It's from Etsy and basically it's an article of clothing. <laughs> ish. Um, I had this saved in my watch list and I don't know, for some reason, I just, I don't know, two weeks ago or so, I was like, you know what? Just, just freaking buy it. Like YOLO. And so basically I bought a cloak <laughs> and I bought it from an Etsy seller and the price was fairly reasonable. Like for what it is, like I thought, well, that price is, so I kind of wondered, like, is it good quality or anything? But now that I have it, I'm like, oh my God, like it is so nice. So let me show you my cloak. So now I can be like the Grinch and be like, get my cloak. So, oh, look what color it is. Yes. Okay. So this is a, um, oval cut cloak, cloak. <laughs> and let me just model it for you real quick. So it's got this fun little latch here too. Now this is oval cut. So that means like, um, it's not a full circle, but it's kind of nice because that means the sleeves, like there are no sleeves. And then the hood on it is so nice. Like it's got room for hair, you know, I can do like a freaking Sith Lord moment, or I can do like, you know, an Arwen moment. And I love, it's just so pretty and it's so comfortable. And it's really stitched well. Like, and when I ordered it, you had the choice of what closure you wanted. And I opted to get this one cause it's got like Celtic stuff. Like my heritage is more Celtic than anything. And I just thought that was cool. And of course I had to have silver. And then you could pick the length. And mine I went with, I think, was it called not tall or kind of short or something? It was funny. It was, it was not the shortest, but 
I went with my height. I'm 5'3". So, but yeah, I just, I love it. It's so pretty. And yeah, it's a cloak. What the hell are you going to wear it for? Like, I don't know. We have a lot of Ren Fest in my area. So that'd be fun. It'd be great for Halloween. Um, but what I'm thinking it for is uh, one of my belly dancing friends messaged me recently. They're having a Christmas type show. And she asked me if I'd come and do chair massages there. And I thought, well, I can wear my cloak to that because it's a winter thing. So like, why not? And it's like, yeah, it's kind of dumb. It's going to be put away for a while. But you know what? I've got high heels in my closet that don't come out much either. And they cost more than this. Like this was $85 with the shipping from Canada. So if you're like, oh my God, that's so nice. I would like a cloak. And she has lots of different fabrics. That's the crushed velvet. And again, it's the oval one. She also has full circles, but they had the slits for the arms. So like then when your arms come out, you're cold, you know? So I like those because it's more like a sleeve, but it's more of a manageable sleeve. And so if you're interested, the Etsy page is creature with two R's. Creature.etsy.com. Again, creature with two R's. And that was the mauve lavender. I was kind of nervous when I saw the mauve in it because to me, mauve is kind of a rosy purple color or rosy pink color. But I saw someone had posted a, um, like a picture of the one that they ordered. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's clearly purple. So we're good. <laughs> so yeah. But anyways, if you want to have an overindulgent, buy yourself a cloak so you can say, get my cloak, then have a visit on her page. She has lots of different colors and she has different fabric types too. So now I think it's time for you guys to take a look at my whip. And I've actually gotten a fair bit done. I pulled out Renaissance Mermaid by Mirabila. And I've gotten a lot done on her tail here. So I started, let me move the chart. I flipped it so y'all can't see it, but now it's still kind of in the way. I'm not going to unscroll this just because like I've done this dark blue color and I don't know, it's just, there's not just much to show, you know I mean? I'll unroll it later when I get more done. Most of what I got done was this. So when I first started, I only had this color done here, this lovely over dyed silk. So I have added all of this since I got started. So yeah, I've actually got like the full shape of her tail that, and I got her little some people call it a purse. Let me show you the picture of her in case you guys don't know who she is. So it's this mermaid right here. And so this, some people are calling a purse. I mean, I guess what else is it? But then at the same time, what does the mermaid need a purse for? But her little dingle dangly thingy is right there. And so yeah, I'm getting her tail all done. Yeah, it's so nice. Here's my new clay by Cam. This is the Golden Autumn Dragon. I really love the um, chevron. Is that the right kind of pattern? Like the little wiggly kind of design in the wings. I think it's real pretty. I also don't have a yellow dragon. This is the closest thing I have to a yellow dragon now, but I still wouldn't call this a solid yellow dragon, though the back is very yellow. But it's more of like kind of a mustard colored dragon. But I needed a yellow one, so I got me one. That and I really love the colors in the tail here, how it kind of ombres. So yeah, it's cute. This one doesn't have a mouth. It's funny. Occasionally she does ones that have mouth and other times not. Like, I think the one I got before this had a mouth. And the one before it didn't. So it's kind of random. Oh, and speaking of which, I was not expecting... Yule dragons to show up so quickly, but we're doing Yule dragons. And y'all know, if you've been paying attention, I promised to do my Clay by Kim tour when Yule dragons came around again, because that was the point when I was finally successful in catching them on her website. It was when Yule dragons came out last year. So that means I'm going to have to do my Clay by Kim collection <laughs> video soon, which I will. Um, I'm probably going to wait till December at least, just because I wasn't expecting Yule Dragons in November. I was expecting them more in December. Also, they have a new house. Um, this isn't the one they're staying in. It's too small. <laughs> I need to get a bigger one. And I'll probably hang it up on the wall here, because I wanted them to be somewhere where I can see them, but somewhere where they were safe. You know, and I have my anxious brain, like I was saying. 
I am afraid of hanging them on the wall because then I'm like, what if there's an earthquake and they fall and they all break? I'm like, oh, which, you know, truth be told, I had them pinned to this thing and this thing's just perched on the table too. So that's precarious anyways. Um, so yeah, I had to turn this up so I could fit this here so they could be right there and I could look at all of them because they make me so happy. Sorry, I keep bumping you guys. I don't want to make you seasick. Okay, so I think that's pretty much everything for today. Um, future videos. Um, like I said, with the whole cancer thingy, like I got pretty much sidetracked. I, there's a bunch of videos I'm planning on doing. I want to do like a video on like Hardinger, like beginning Hardinger. So I've thought of filming that. Um, I also want to do a video on like speciality stitches. Um, I've got to do my prep for my whip parade. I also need to assess how I've landed on that, which I haven't done too good. Though I will say I have started and finished a few pieces that I wasn't even expecting to start. So I guess you can count that as a win. But that's one reason why I pulled this girl out because I really, before the end of the year, want to finish another mermaid. And she's the closest I am to that, which I know you're like, gosh, she's, you got a ways to go. Yes, I do. <laughs> but um, I also want to pull some of my Bella Filipina mermaids out. Like the very first one I started was the one whose name I always screw up. Let's see if I get it right this time. Um, Daughter of Atlantis, or heiress of Atlantis, I think it is. She was the very first one I started. I haven't touched her in a long time. So I need to pull her out and work on her. I also need to work on Queen Amphitrite because she's a big girl. You know, most of the Bella Filipinas are six pages and she's nine. So I really need to get her out and get work done on her just because she's so big. So that and I do miss her. Like I miss working on her. Um, I also miss working on G word queen, who I like to call tribal queen because the G word is a racial slur. Uh, if you guys have watched my videos, you know which one that is. It's a Mirabella design. She's a lot of fun to work on, but I'm really wanting to finish a mermaid. So right now I'm working on her. I am feeling the desire to move off of her already. I'm going to finish the color that I'm on in her tail and then I'll probably rotate off of her. And then I might go back and forth between two mermaids and then I don't know, make them race, <laughs> see which one I could finish first. So that might be a thing that I do. I also am feeling the urge to do another uh, Chatelaine, one of my mandalas. I really want to get Misty Morning Vineyard out and strike border before the end of the year. That's kind of a lot of stuff to get done. I mean, we only have six weeks-ish left in the year, so I'm going to have to get to stitching which I'm not opposed to. It's just, I've been working a lot lately and oof, just sometimes get home and I'm tired and I don't feel like stitching. So, but anyways, that's pretty much it for today. I'm looking around to see if there's anything I forgot because sometimes I lay something down and mean to talk about it and then I totally forget. Nope, I think we're good for now. So um, my next video, probably in two weeks, kind of like usual, unless I do like, um, unless I finish Luna, you know, which I would like to finish that one quick because it's not too, too big. And I don't know, I'm just really excited by the toss on it that I kind of want to get it done. So um, I might get the little gingy men done too. So might do a little close up video of those. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get any um, this is how I do it stuff filmed. We'll see. I will try. I will definitely try. But I can't make any promises, so because I don't want anyone to be disappointed. Oh, also, one thing I did want to mention, probably in my next video, one thing I've decided is I think I want to do some stitchy kindness for my next video um, post-Thanksgiving, pre-Christmas. So I think I'm going to do some giving away on my next video. So if you're interested in that, things that are on the giving away list for sure are pieces of Ada that have come in kits that I don't want to stitch with. So I will have a pile of that and I will send it to you free of charge. And I don't want anything in return for it. You are giving me space in my room for other things. If you really feel compelled to like, oh, I need to pay you back or whatever, make a donation to a charity or something like that. So this is total stitchy kindness. 
please take this stuff off of me. I'll probably have some Mill Hill beads because I like to convert to Delicas. So I have a lot of Mill Hills laying around that I bought so I could convert, but now they're not getting used. So if you would take some of those off my hands, that would be very nice. I'm thinking I will have maybe three giveaways. So if you're interested, stay tuned for the next video. Probably won't be here until two weeks or so unless I really get a lot of progress done. I need to talk to you guys sooner. But yeah, I'm going to plan to do a giveaway. So if you guys are interested, check that out next time. So, but yeah. Anyway, so it was fun catching up with you guys. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will see you guys next time. Have a great Thanksgiving or Indigenous People Day, whatever you want to call it. Um, hug your family members. Go get your pap smears. <laughs> so you can find out when things are going south before things go too far south. Um, and yeah. Have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.